So, if you've checked out some of my other videos, you know that I consider how a piece of music is produced to be of equal importance to the notes that make up the track or cue. As a composer, I mix and produce all of my own music, whether it's been for my own projects or even when I did additional music writing for other composers. As a result, I receive a lot of questions about which plugins I use or favor for mixing, and I always say it's not just about using the same tools, but more specifically, knowing how those tools are being used. And that's why I created this video where I'm gonna share my four most used EQ plugins and talk a little bit about how I personally use them when mixing my own tracks as a composer for film and television. I encourage you to stick around and not just quickly scrub through the plugins because as I said, it's my opinion that the real value is in the how and why. I could easily just tell you about these tools in five seconds, but doing that is not going to have any effect on the mixing or production quality of your music. So with that said, let's dive into my top four EQ plugins and how I use them. Plugin number one is Studio EQ or the Channel EQ, which is built into Cubase and Logic. So these plugins are the perfect example of why you do not need to spend tons of extra money to get great mixes. For Cubase users, the Studio EQ plugin comes built into every single track. It's similar to Logic's channel EQ and the principles I'm about to discuss apply to both. So these are basically like my first line of defense when trying to add shape to a sound or if I'm trying to carve out unwanted frequencies. If you are under the impression that you can only use really expensive CPU hungry plugins that emulate Neve or SSL consoles, just know that I have tons of those. And as great as they are, they don't stop me from using these plain vanilla stock EQs. I'll personally use these plugins for more dramatic manipulation. For example, if a drum needs like a punchier low end or a crisper high end, the parametric bands are really great to quickly dial that in. And I'm really not shy about how I use it either. I also typically turn the high and low shelves into two more parametric bands to give me more control. So it's important to note that every single instrument in my template uses this EQ. So if we look over here at this example with my low strings, I have these old Giga Studio strings that I'll often use to blend with cellos and basses in order to get a more cinematic tone. And by using this stock EQ, I simply dip the high end here but I boost the low and low mids over here. And I do this because that's what this patch naturally does well. The higher end stuff is very fake sounding and synthetic, but the lower register adds warmth. So I'm using the EQ to accentuate those traits and make blending these synthetic strings even more effective. So now if we look at the individual cello and bass strings, which are playing the exact same thing, you can see that I'm doing the opposite, so I'm adding a high-end boost. That's because these samples are very natural and like really rosiny. So again, unlike the other patch, the higher frequencies on these samples are really realistic. So I'm using this EQ to accentuate the parts of each instrument or sample that I like, and then I'm toning down the parts that I don't like. This is what I mean by how I use the plugins matters more than what's being used. This is a cheap plugin, it comes standard with these programs, but how I'm using them makes a big difference to my mixes personally. However, if you thought this video would be filled with much cooler stuff, that's what my second EQ choice is all about, and that's why it's the FabFilter Pro Q3. This is one of the greatest modern EQs that I've ever used, to be completely honest. Its features and capabilities are just so extensive, I could honestly do an entire video on it. And if that interests you, let me know in the comments below. Basically, I use this EQ from anything, from broad adjustments to super surgical fine tuning to dynamic EQ and so on. It's seriously, seriously amazing. And I'm gonna go over some more of the simple features here, but again, it's really a sandbox. So if you're interested, we can explore it together in another video. Just let me know if you'd like to do that. So I use this EQ a lot on drum buses and I combine it with the stock generic EQs that we just discussed. And the reason I like to do this on drums is because a drum set is just one of those instruments where it's got the whole spectrum from highs and lows, so the kick drum to the cymbals. And so an EQ like this that allows for dynamic compression, multiple bands, and so on, it just becomes really, really useful on an instrument that's so dynamic like that. So the Pro Q3 also has this great feature that lets you target where the EQ is happening 
from a panning standpoint. So again, on a drum set, I found that this can be really useful because the low end frequencies of a kick drum, they're commonly centered, but the mids and highs from the room tones are stereo and surround if you're having fun in that world. So if you use this on a drum bus where all of your individual drums are being routed to, you can really enhance the tone and feel of the kit as a whole. For example, if you look over here, I'm doing a bit of low boost to bring out more of that kick drum, but I can make sure that the EQ adjustment is only happening in the center channel and not affecting the stereo field as much which will help me prevent my overall room tones from getting too muddy. To be clear, this is definitely useful on tons of instruments other than drums, but it's where I find that I grab for it most commonly. So if I'm blending a rock drum set with the orchestra or sound design, which I sometimes do for action scenes, or if it's a jazzy big band sequence that you might hear on an animated project, you'll likely find this on my drum bus. To just really, really quickly demonstrate how well this works with the previous plugin I talked about, let's take a listen to this drum part. You'll see that just about all of my EQ adjustments on the individual instruments are happening with the generic or stock EQ, and then individual drum parts feed into this master bus where I'm applying this FabFilter Pro Q3. So I'm only using these two EQ plugins for this drum part. Listen to how all the EQ sounds when it's bypassed, And now here it is with all the EQ enabled. Again, it's just two plugins and I find it to be really effective. But what if you've already EQ'd all your individual tracks and you're looking to do an adjustment on the final mix for either a soundtrack or portfolio mastered version of a cue. That's where this next EQ comes in, which is Ozone's Equalizer and Dynamic EQ by Isotope. In this case, as I mentioned, I'm most commonly using this EQ when mastering on a final two mix for soundtracks or if I'm using the piece in my portfolio for a pitch. So the most amazing thing about it and how I personally use it is with these cool features called Master Assistant and Reference. So my standard workflow is that I'm gonna slap Ozone onto my master bus. And the first thing I do is use their Master Assistant AI to do the first pass at my two mix. Now, some people are shocked by this, but I have to be honest, I think this AI tool does a really great job at creating a starting point and I know it's a very sensitive subject when bringing AI into the mix, no pun intended, but the fact is I know several very well-known composers and prominent mixing engineers that use this feature. So if you're a composer that has little knowledge about mixing and mastering, this is an indispensable tool. But if you're a major production nerd, just like me, it's also just as useful. So as you can see, it's automatically made EQ adjustments for me. So the next thing I'll do is then pop in a reference track and I make sure the track is something in a similar vein sonically to what I'll be mixing and mastering. So for example, if I've just written a flowing adagio string part, I'll load something that's similar to that, but if it's a hybrid orchestral action scene, I won't want to reference the adagio string track I'll want to use something that is sonically much closer to my piece. And once that track is loaded, I can see through the EQ's visualizer the actual sonic differences between my master and this reference track. So I'm hoping that by this point, it's becoming easy to see why this is so insanely valuable, especially if you have less experience mixing and mastering your own cues and soundtracks. It can take a lot of time to train your ears to hear things properly and know what adjustments need to be made. But between the master assistant and the visual reference capabilities, it's incredibly useful as a tool. So for example, I can see that my reference track is much brighter or maybe it has a punchier low end. And again, these are things I personally might be able to hear, but if you're sort of getting your footing as a mixer or a producer, you can use your eyes to make these adjustments and then you'll hear the difference when you do that. And if you do it over and over again, it'll help make you a better engineer for your own music, which is a very, very valuable thing. So basically, I love this plugin. I love its AI capabilities and I could not recommend it more highly, but 
Something I noticed when mastering and EQing my own tracks is that if it's lacking in low end to begin with before I master and then you try to recover that just in the two track, it can cause everything else to get a bit muddy, which is why on my basses, I use this next plugin, which is the Pultic Style EQ, either by UAD or Waves. I use them both. I find that the interface on the UAD version is much better, in my opinion. I also like the presets on the UAD versions much better, but they're both great emulations and you can get a natural sound when processing any instruments through them. So I especially love using these on bass instruments and I use various bass sounds to layer into my mix for added emotion and punch. For example, I like to use this Psycho Circus bass from Output Substance Library all the time on big hybrid orchestral action sequences like this. And what I do is I use that Pultic EQ to really add to the bass and low end while balancing out that gritty high end you hear in it as well. It's just super effective like that. This EQ helps me to emphasize the bass guitar, low strings, and other low percussion elements in the way that makes the score a lot more driving, but without becoming overly muddy. If I haven't said it yet, also, all the links to these plugins are gonna be put below. I don't get any residuals from it. I just wanted to make it easier for you to find them if you wanted to use them. So truthfully, those are my most used plugins. Everything else is just sort of icing on the cake that I use for fun when I have time to dig deeper, but I can easily get by with just these four and that's why I wanted to share them with you guys today. Most importantly, I hope that I'm communicating that mixing is musical in and of itself. If you're a composer or a music maker and you wanna see more videos like this discussing mixing, mastering, or music production as it pertains to scoring for film and television, please just let me know in the comments section below. Also, feel free to ask any questions you might have and make sure to check out my educational website, modernmediacomposer.com, where you can sign up for free virtual instruments and more educational content just like this. I try to release new videos on this channel just about every week to help aspiring composers and music makers learn about my process for scoring on film and TV shows. So check out some of the other videos I have on here. And as always, I hope this was helpful.